Patrick MP. I work in the policy division. I head up the human development, uh, health education, water sanitation, HIV and AIDS in Irish Aid. Uh, and as you've mentioned, we're, we're, we're here today to, to hear from this UN Special Rapporteur, Mr. Leo, Dr. Leo Heller. I think as many of us notice, the wa water scarcity affects more than 40%. 1.7 billion people, I think, uh, live in water areas where the water usage is greater than the rechargeable uh, capacity. And I think is it about 2.4 billion uh, are affected by by lack of access to basic water and sanitation. Now for an agency or a department such as ours, this has a huge impact not only on the public health matters, but there's also the, the gender related issues. Women and girls are particularly affected by this given their, their work in terms of collecting water and cooking, but, but also the sanitation matters that, that, that affect school, school going girls. So, it is a major, from a development cooperation perspective, it is obviously a, 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 central, a, a central theme. Um, despite the challenges, I think it's probably fair to recognize that the MDGs did bring attention to it and did, did uh, identify some success uh, in, in terms of, I think it was 2.6 billion uh, people gaining access to, to water, maybe not the most, not the best water, but at least coverage or access did, did, did increase. And I think in 2010, the UN General Assembly recognized the access to water as a, as, as, as a human right. And, and that certainly has led to the impetus to have it as a central SDG, SDG number six, with a number of very important uh, tar targets uh, identified. Within Irish Aid, we, we do fund water and sanitation. There's sort of three broad areas that we, we, we support. The Bangladesh uh, CLTS, the community-led and leadership sanitation system headed by Dr. Kamal Kar, that works on a regional basis and provides uh, technical assistance and poly adv policy advice. Uh, in our country programming, our engagement is in a number of countries, but primarily in relation to Liberia, where we're funding water and sanitation um, consortium. Uh, which involves concern worldwide amongst a number of other NGOs. And then from our own civil society program, we fund a number of Irish NGOs in, in about seven or eight different countries working in water and sanitation. And our expenditure is about 4.5 million a year uh, on, on directly related to water and sanitation. So it is, an, it is a part, it's not as major significant budget as we would like, but within the resources that we have, it's, it certainly uh, receives attention in our, both our bilateral and our, our work with, with NGOs. Today I just, I've been asked to introduce you, Dr. welcome to Ireland. I think I forgot to ask you, is this your first time? Oh, the second. The second, second time, very good. Um, as we know, uh, Dr. Dr. Heller is the UN Special Rapporteur on the Human Right to Safe and Drinking Water. This is an honorary position, um, and uh, his role is as a, to the Human Rights Council, is to report on country situation or specific human rights themes, and I think you'll be speaking about that uh, qu quite shortly. Uh, you come from a distinguished academic background, and I think you've led a major one point, or 150 billion uh, program, uh, or, or the design of a, uh, water sanitation program in Brazil, a 20-year program of estimated 1 1.5, 150 billion euro, um, which you've also studied, I think, in Oxford, uh, and led uh, your department in the University of Minas Gerais. So I think without anything more, uh, I understand you're also a current researcher at uh, the yeah. University. But anyway, thank you very much for coming, and I look forward to, to hearing from you. So, uh, there is a, a lot of backgrounds about uh, the way the human rights, water and sanitation raised through the international law. Uh, we can identify in the, the more modern uh, period the Universal Declaration of the Human Rights that uh, the, this, probably all you know, 
This declaration was very key to implement the human rights framework uh, recently. And obviously, the, the declaration doesn't talk about water, the right to water. But there is a, an article in the declaration, the 25th, that talks about a, a minimum standard of life as a right. And the minimum standard of life is a way to, to develop a framework on the economic, social, and cultural rights. That is a, a, a branch of the rights, together with the political and civil rights. And through the economic, social, and cultural rights, uh, several other instruments were approved and adopted by the UN, uh, especially the International Covenant on the Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, that again talks about the standard of life, that includes the right to housing, food, and others, not water. Still. And we have several conventions that, in certain way, approaches the right to water. The conventions on the rights to the child, on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women, rights to persons with, with disabilities. In 2002, the Committee on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights issued a comment, the General Comment 15, that is specifically for the right to water. In this occasion, the right to water, not right to water and sanitation. And this comment was the basis for different discussions under the General Assembly. And in 2010, as mentioned, the General Assembly and also the Human Rights Council adopted this resolution on the human rights to water and sanitation. In this moment, sanitation was integrated in the the definition of the rights. And from 2010 to now, there are different resolutions that has been approved by the General Assembly and the Human Rights Council. It's interesting to mention in last year, the General Assembly adopted a resolution that, differently from the, the previous, uh, tried to, to approach in distinct way the right to water and the right to sanitation. In this resolution, we have a distinction between the two rights. The, the idea is that these two rights are at the same time integrated but distinct in, in such a way that a person can claim for the violation of the right to sanitation without attaching this violation to the right to water. So this is a new uh, way to look at the right to water and sanitation. So there is a lot, a lot, there is a lot of uh, documents, elements to study the origin of the right to water and sanitation, how it along the time was framed and has the current structure, the current form. Very briefly, we can say that there are some what we call normative contents of the, the, the rights. So the contents of the human right to water ensures everyone without discrimination to have access to these five elements of the access to water. So a water delivered uh, through the human rights framework needs to be to have sufficient quantity, needs to be safe regarding the health protection of who uses the water, needs to be acceptable from the point of view of the cultural values of the population, needs to be physically accessible, that it's distinct than sufficient. You can have, for instance, a pipeline in a street without water. So the water is available, but it's not accessible in this situation. And this is very, very important. Needs to be affordable, affordable for especially people that live in poverty. We are talking about water for personal and domestic uses, not for industrial uses, agricultural uses, but particularly personal and domestic uses. And the human right to sanitation have, has 
similar definition, but of course adapted to the, the particularities of sanitation. So the human rights sanitation titles everyone without discrimination to have physical and affordable access to sanitation in all spheres of life, safe from the point of view of health protection, again, hygienic, so hygiene is very integrated with the, the definition of the right to sanitation, secure, socially and culturally acceptable, that is very, very important in, in sanitation because there are some uh, experiences, some cases where there are interventions for poor people uh, of solutions of sanitation that is not attached with their cultural values and that provides privacy and ensures dignity. This is very specific for sanitation, it's very very important from the gender perspective, from looking at the women needs, privacy and dignity are very important. I'm, I'm just a parenthesis, tomorrow I'm presenting my report to the Human Rights Council that's about exactly gender and privacy and dignity are very key when we look at the gender dimension to the access to sanitation. These are uh, principles of the human rights that are not specific for the right to water and the right to sanitation. They are common principles of the, all the human rights, but are very important when we assess a situations of access to water and sanitation. So, what I used to say is, uh, when we associate these uh, contents with these principles, we have a good framework to assess different situations, a country, or a, a, a situation of violation. So, equality and non-discrimination is very key. For water and sanitation particularly is very key because most of the countries, I can say, uh, the progress of the access to water sanitation looks particularly to the more well-off population and not the worst of population. And when we look at the progress of the access disaggregating uh, the population between the richest and the poorest, we can see in almost all the countries that the richest uh, gain access first and progress differently and the poorest population. And in these situations, most of the times, uh, reveals a pattern of discrimination. Discrimination not only against the poorest, but also against ethnic minorities, women, religions uh, that are minority in countries, rural areas if compared to urban areas, and so on and so forth. Participation and inclusion is very key. Also, accountability is a very important issue in the human rights, and it leads to different ways of thinking of accountable mechanisms. And progressive realization, that is an important principle also, because the idea, this, this wasn't a curious discussion in 2010, because some of the countries were not uh, happy to support the resolution because they thought at that time that if I accept the resolution of the human rights, tomorrow I'm a violator of the rights because not all my population have a good access to water and sanitation. But this is not the idea of the human rights. The idea is that the states should make a, a, an increasing effort to progressively uh, ensure access to the population using the maximum available resource. So the opposite is true when a country is not doing the, what they, they should do to, to ensure the access to all the population, we can think on a situation of violation. Maybe I should talk about court now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this, this is, uh, I'm not sure if you followed what the special rapporteurs issued about Cork, because in Cork, uh, the homeless people uh, have no access to water. <coughs> the, there are not, not, no public uh, 
initiative or policy in order to ensure the access to water to people that are living in the street and the, the number of these people were increasing and uh, yes we received a claim from the civil society of Ireland and we, we thought that this is a case to request to the state explanations about why not why the maximum available resources are not used to ensure that these people that before uh, used to have access to water was not having access to water. So this is an example, I'm not sure it's, if it's the best example for not using the maximum available resources, but at least it's an Irish example. So you can feel exactly what I'm talking about. There are, of course, other more relevant cases uh, in the US, for instance, there are several cases of disconnection people because people are not uh, able to afford the tariffs and so on and so forth. This is a, a very strong situation. And of course, in developing countries, there are a lot of situations where we can say that probably there is no progressive realization of the rights. MDGs, as mentioned before, the official statistics says that in 2010 the target on water was reached. The, the target was not that ambitious. The target was to halve the proportion of the population without access to water from 1990 to 2015. So no universal access to half. And uh, we know what the half without access means, unfortunately, we are talking about the poorest part of the population. But we need to celebrate, but we need also to look at the empty half of the, the glass. There are still 663 million people without access to drinking water, improved drinking water source, 9% of the world population. And improved was the definition of access adopted by the monitoring mechanisms for the MDGs, and I will talk about that after. And there are some shortcomings. One is exactly the definition of improved. Uh, certainly, this definition is not attached to the principles of the human rights to water, because under improved, there are different solutions that not necessarily guarantee affordable access, quality, accessibility, and so on. The idea was only to identify improved sources of water, de defining some categories of sources of water. There are a lot of gaps between rich and poor, urban and rural, disadvantaged versus, versus general public, disadvantaged we can defined in different ways, looking at ethnic aspects, uh, slums, and so on and so forth. Uh, but on sanitation, the target was not met, and sanitation is considered one of the most off-track targets of the MDGs. These are some numbers that were previously presented, 2.4 billion people without improved sanitation access, 70% of which in the rural areas, 1 billion people practicing open defecation, this is a very concerned number. Again, there is a definition that is very questionable under the human rights framework, improved access, and there is no monitoring, no uh, no aspect mentioned about the access to water and sanitation outside the household, in schools, in health centers, and workplaces, etc., etc., that are very important because, you know, most of the people spend more time in these places than in the households. This is only to exemplify this is a, a figure from the 
the report of GMP, the Joint Monitoring Program. I'm trying to, yeah, uh, for a, an arbitrary country, uh, Kazakhstan. And it shows how, when we disaggregate the data, we, sh we are looking at very strong disparities between uh, groups of populations. And here it's a, a statistics about uh, piped water on premises. We can say that uh, worldwide we have around 56% of the population with water on premises. When we disaggregate by regions, we have this very broad spectrum. When we take Caucasus and Central Asia and disaggregate, we have this figure. When we take Kazakhstan and disaggregate between urban and rural, we have in urban area an access that is equivalent of the best region in the rural area, very low compared to the regions. And when we disaggregate with, uh, based on quintiles of wealth, we have this figure. The richest urban population has a better performance than the Latin American Caribbean, and the poorest pop rural population, rural poorest population, worse than Sub-Saharan Africa. So this will be very important under the SDGs uh, agenda. We need not only to look at uh, national averages, but we need to look at parts of the population traditionally discriminated against the access to water and sanitation. Uh, again, from the, the GMP report, we have here two interesting uh, cases and different cases where we have different ways of progress from the beginning to the end of the period. So we have here, it's a little bit complicated because a lot of colors and numbers and, and graphs, but it's easy to understand. We have here the five quintiles of wealth, and in each quintile, 1990 to 2010. And the colors represent the different uh, represent the different solutions. So improvement is this uh, uh, green here. And we can see in this situation, rural Pakistan, uh, in these uh, 20 years, the, the richest part of the population gained best access than the poorest part. And here we have a different trend, an opposite trend. We can see the slope of this uh, lines here are better than these two best quintiles here. So this is a, a very uh, uh, interesting way to look at how we would need to progress from 2016 to 2030 because there are different ways to include the population. We can do business as usual, that is that, increasing uh, faster the percentage of access of the richest part of the population, or we can have strong policies in order to include faster the poorest. So this is important because these are, uh, this means different policies, different intentions, different ways to progress the access of the population. Uh, about the SDGs, uh, I'm happy to say that the human rights to water and sanitation is explicitly mentioned on the document. This is the only one economic, social, and cultural rights main, explicitly mentions, apart from the right to gender equality. So it's very suggestive that we need to, we don't have option, we need to, to look at the SDGs through the human rights lens. We have a dedicated goal for water and sanitation, the goal six, and the first two targets are related to the target 6.1 water, 6.2 to sanitation, and there are several aspects that are attached to the human rights framework. And 6.1 uh, talks about universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all, and 6.2, equitable sanitation and hygiene for all, and open defecation, 
so there won't be a real disappear under these statistics. Special attention to the needs of women and girls and those in vulnerable sort of situations. So we have a, a very progressive uh, agenda now, uh, very attached to the human rights. The challenge now is how to implement, how to monitor the progress under this agenda. Uh, here, this is uh, taken from uh, a publication of UN Water. Uh, uh, it's a publication about, inter about interlinkages. UN Water tried to identify in which extent Goal 6 is linked to other goals. And it's very interesting. If you are interested, I suggest to read. I only uh, put here the target 6.1 and 6.2, but the publication also try to understand the other targets. There are six targets in, in Goal 6. And we can see, it's not difficult to understand, that there are important synergies between water sanitation and, for instance, and in poverty, that are under the Goal 1. Uh, health, maternal mortality, children mortality, uh, water and healthcare services, uh, waterborne diseases that are in target 3.3, 4, that's about education, uh, facilities in schools, etc. 5, that's about discrimination against women and girls. Uh, then 8, that's about economic growth, economic productivity. Nine, infrastructure. Ten, that it's about uh, ending inequality. It's obvious the relationship between 6.1 and 6.2. Eleven, that's very key. Eleven is about inclusive and resilient cities. So 11.1 is very close to the 6.1 and 6.2, access for all to adequate, safe and affordable housing and basic services. 11.1 is about slums uh, and other kinds of uh, settlements like that. 13, about climate change. 14.1, uh, about pollution, sea pollution. And 16 about institutions, corruption, etc. etc. So, this is a very important exercise to look at the, the goals in a cross cutting way. And the, the goal 6 has a very strong relation with other goals. So, it's very important to think on the goal 6, not only looking at the goal 6, especially target 6.1 and 2, but also in which extent the implementation of the, the, these two targets can contribute strongly and faster to the other goals, especially in the poverty and the uh, inequalities, women and girls' uh, uh, attentions, etc. Et These are some new developments on the monitoring. The idea, I, I'm very involved on that to, as a reporter because I'm, I'm trying to dialogue with the uh, GMP and I'm participating in some boards of the GMP. And the idea is to, to raise, to include another hang on the ladder of the different levels of services for water sanitation. And this is the traditional ladder for drinking water, this for sanitation. Now the idea is to, to monitor what has been called safely managed water safely managed sanitation and that would be a, a, another level up to the improvement definition and also there are some discussions around uh, hygiene in this case hand washing can be the, the main indicator for hygiene, hygiene. and uh, briefly safely managed drinking water would mean a basic thing, water sources which is located on premises that it's new under the, the monitoring process, available when needed, 
and free of fecal and priority chemical contamination. So water quality is now included in this definition. In sanitation, we are, not, we are talking about not shared facilities that was, could be considered adequate under the MDGs and where excreta are safely disposed in situ or treated off-site. So wastewater uh, management is also included here and hand washing. And these are some ways to look off the, the target. The target was converted in an indicator. Each target now has a proper indicator. And this is a way of breaking down the target into the different uh, elements and defining what each element should mean. So, universal would mean water not only in households, but also in schools, health facilities, workplaces. For all, not only men, women, girls, boys, but also considering different aspects of the life, disabilities, age, etc., etc. And here we have equitable access, what access should mean what safe should mean, affordable, drinking, etc. So the idea now is to have a deeper uh, approach on the definition of access. Access is not only to have an improved source, but needs to meet all these elements. I need to say that it's not easy to monitor. It's not easy to collect data sufficient to have a very good uh, global uh, monitoring process, but I think this is a, a process. We will start with some kind of data and the data would be improved in these next coming years. And the same for sanitation. And we need to define here what hygiene means, what open defecation means, etc. etc. There are some exercises here uh, that defines this elements. Uh, here for institutions, the idea is not to have too much categories, but some few. And this is another challenge, how to monitor, not looking only to national averages, but also to try to disaggregate data and to compare different populations. So the idea is to this is relatively well developed geographic wealth quintile and the difference between urban and rural are well monitored by a true the SDGs. But interurban is a challenge. How to compare in Brazil the favelas, the slums with the general urban populations. It's not so easy, but we need to do that. And also group-related inequalities based on race, ethnicity, migratory status. I don't need to, to tell you in Europe that migration will be an increasing important challenge. And this is a very uh, strong challenge, how to monitor inter-household inequality, but I think it's also important, sex, age and disability. Because when we look at a household with uh, considering that it's a, a uniform population in the household, it's not true because uh, you, you can have a toilet uh, appropriate for uh, women, women and men, but it's not appropriate for old person, person with disabilities, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I think this is the last slide. Uh, the idea here is a, a provocation trying to convince you that this is a, an inertial trend. If we start 2015 with this difference between, we can define advantage and disadvantage in different ways, but this is the reality for most of the country, urban and rural, uh, urban and favelas, 
uh, men and women, etc., etc. And if we we reach 2030 with an universal access, the trend will be that. But the idea is to to put the most disadvantaged first in the priority of the state members and to have specific policies focused on these groups. This is not easy, but is a, a way of look differently of the traditional policies of including people to the access to water and sanitation. And I'm convinced that this is the best way to make a good contribution to the other goals of the SDGs. So let's think on this movement of changing the traditional way of uh, delivering the policies. So thank you.